past couple of years, I've spoken with dozens of remarkable West Porters. We've talked about policing, affordable housing, music, food, politics, and many other aspects of Westport life. Today's 06880 podcast may be the most remarkable of all. We will not hear our guest's voice, but we will learn an incredible amount from his words. Winston Brown is a non-speaking autistic teenager. For 15 of his 16 years, the Staples High School rising junior was thought by everyone, educators, doctors, even family members, as having a profound intellectual disability. It was believed he could barely learn or communicate. That was far from the truth. He has learned all his life on his own. Two years ago, Winston began communicating through a spelling device. His vast knowledge and intelligence were unlocked. Now he's using a QWERTY keyboard and his high intelligence and dreams for the future are even more evident. Winston looks forward to becoming a neuroscientist to advocate for people with autism and other neurodiversities. I first met Winston a year ago at his Westport home. He answers my questions with a spelling device. It was clear he had been frustrated all his life, given first grade books to read and rudimentary math programs. A year later, his progress is remarkable. I went to his house again the other day and I watched him type some answers to some fairly deep and profound questions. I was awed by his brain and his personality that for too long had been locked away. I was inspired by his mother, Linda Kamel Brown, his brother Harrison, and his communication partner, Elisa Feynman, as they gave him the, the tools, the time, and the confidence to speak. We will hear from Winston soon. First, however, I'd like Winston's mom to explain his condition, apraxia, and describe how he communicates. Linda? Well, so non-speaking autistics are generally not intellectually disabled, contrary to prior beliefs. Often they're highly intelligent, like Winston, who had been absorbing everything around him for the 15 years prior to being able to communicate. And there is some new thinking, Dan, that suggests that autism is a motor planning sensory disorder rather than an intellectual disability. Cognitive receptive functioning is not impacted by having autism, just expressive language. So Winston started out a year ago using a stencil board. Then he moved to a laminate board. He now uses an Apple Bluetooth QWERTY keyboard. And he uses one finger to poke out the letters. Winston, like his cohorts, does need a communication and regulation partner, just like a deaf person would need an ASL interpreter, an ASL partner. The purpose of the communication partner and regulation partner is to coach the motor planning skills and to help regulate some of the STEM behaviors that are associated with autism and, and apraxia. So the communication and regulation partner, sometimes called a CRP, is present to help also coach the ocular motor planning, which is impacted by autism, apraxia. So you may see some small typos here, which look like spelling errors, but actually those are just mispokes due to motor planning issues. So um, with that... That is great. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And now for the star of our show, Winston Brown. Winston, welcome to the podcast. How does it feel to be on the show? Thank you for inviting me here today. I am truly excited and extremely nervous to be here. That is great. And congratulations on moving to the QWERTY keyboard. How long have you had the QWERTY keyboard? Oh, 
Keep going, put your eye on it. Bye, Mama. You're doing great. Snake, sit up tall. Swallow. Oh, I'll be asking some more questions, and in the interest of time, uh, they'll be spoken by the computer, written by him, and they will show Winston's intelligence, his passion, his interest in advocating for himself. So what does this keyboard enable you to do that you haven't been able to do before? I prefer the keyboard because of the text to speak function, so people won't get bored waiting for me to type since I am new at this. I like looking at the screen to help me keep track since my brain is so much faster than my typing. Also, I like the pressure of pushing the keys. It helps my accuracy by slowing me down. Very interesting. So how is the school year gone? I am disappointed that school died and go as well as I had hoped. What were the highlights? That more and more people are finally understanding that I can communicate. I am smart. Also, my brother Harrison and I were on the cover of the school newspaper, Inklings, which was pretty awesome. Mia came to my house for the interview and we took the photos in Staples Library, which was fun. Cover of the newspaper, very cool. <laughs> what, uh, what did not go so well? I thought that once everyone in school realized how smart I am, that they would provide me with the support I need to get a proper high school education. After all, I still want to go to college to become a neuroscientist. I've had some nice teachers, but nice is not enough. I thought a teacher's job is to help students reach their full potential. If they had, I wouldn't have been doing babyish touch math for years when I should have been doing algebra. So what are your rights as a non-speaker under the Americans for Disabilities Act? I have learned that my education should be in the least restrictive environment possible. For me, that is full inclusion in regular classes. I have a right to use my effective communication. I want a trained communication partner called a CRP with me for the entire school day, just like if I was deaf. I would need an ASL signing partner to help. All right. Uh, how about the summer? What are, you, what are you doing this summer, Winston? I want to have fun. I want to swim, go to Compo Beach, play basketball and tennis. Most importantly, I will take online classes to get me ready for next year. Oh, I almost forgot. I am going to be in a movie about inclusion with the Triple Threat Academy. You will be a movie star. How about next year? My success is dependent on having a fully trained CRP with me for the entire day. This way I can take challenging classes so I can go to a good college. I want to become more social and make true friendships. I want to laugh with friends in the cafeteria instead of peers laughing at me. I want to participate in activities like the chess club. Just because I don't speak always mean I don't want to chill, hang out with friends and be part of the group. I felt like an outsider too long. Amazing, amazing, Winston. And what about college? 
Yes, I absolutely want to go to college. I think it would be fun to go to like to U Michigan, but my mom thinks it's too cold and far. Possibly Yale. Wow. Good for you. Any any final message, Winston, for the all the audience of this podcast? I want to talk about how important inclusion is in today's society because more and more people are neurodiverse. We must all coexist and live together. True inclusion means participation and involvement, not just being invited as an observer. Also, it's extremely frustrating being smart and having people not believe in you. I can multiply complex math problems in my head, yet I've been in classes like consumer math despite proving my capabilities. We've got autism wrong for so long, it's time to make it right starting now. Thanks again, Dan, for your constant inclusion. It means a lot to me. I just found out uh, how talented Winston is in math. So I just wrote these numbers, 772 times 259, and Winston is going to now calculate them in his head. Winston, thank you very much. Winston, remarkable. It's, it's been great to see your progress over the past year and get to know you. And I'm in awe of everything you've done. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Elise. Thanks to your mom, Linda, and everybody who believes in you. The best is yet to come, Winston. Thank you. Mm-hmm.